9, I mean, 7.31, and this meeting is being recorded. Um, Councilwoman Ferguson, would you mind giving the invocation, please? Father, I thank you for another opportunity to, for us to meet, to do the business of the city. I ask that you will grace us with your presence, your wisdom, peace, and wise counsel. Let us accomplish everything that, that is on the agenda in an orderly and a timely manner. Bless every citizen, participant, uh, employee, elected official of the city of Glenard, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, uh, Councilman Ferguson. Uh, now I'll take the roll call. Councilwoman Jones. Here. Councilwoman Grion. Here. Councilwoman Fareed. Here. Councilman Hairston. Present. Councilman Herring. Here. Councilwoman Ferguson. Here. And Councilman Curtis is here. We have seven, all seven council members in attendance. Uh, do I have a motion to accept the agenda? So move. Second. Second. Discussion? Councilwoman Guillaume, I saw you unmute yourself. I was just going to say that I do recall, I saw under topics of discussion, some staffing matters. So didn't know if that can go under the administrative section, but if no one can, no one sees that as anything, that's fine. I'm fine with moving forward. It will, it, it'll go in conjunction high level with uh, the administrative reports. Okay. Any other discussion? Okay, well, with that, uh, a vote to accept the uh, agenda. Uh, Councilwoman Jones? Yes. Councilwoman Guillaume? Yes. Councilman Farid? Yes. Councilman Hairston? Yes. Councilman Herring? Yes. Councilman Ferguson? Yes. And Councilman Curtis is a yes, seven yeses. The agenda passes. Uh, well, we will start this meeting off with first uh, item on our agenda, a presentation on traffic calming measures. Uh, Councilman Fareed, are you ready? Hi, yes, I guess you didn't get my email. The um, person who was supposed to speak from uh, Councilwoman Jolene Ivey's office is having a family emergency. She offered to do the presentation from the car, but I thought that would not be safe. So um, we are going to reschedule that. Okay. Thank you. So we will uh, table the presentation on traffic calming measures. And so then we'll just move to the second item on our agenda, um, administrative reports, Mayor Cross. Thank you. Good evening, Councilman uh, Curtis, to the council, to the citizens. Uh, we'll start this off in accordance with the uh, agenda item. And we'll start with the treasurer's report. We'll give you wave tops. And if there is more uh, deep dive required, then each member is available for those questions. We had revenues and expenditures for the month ending in June 2021, uh, which had revenues of $5,147,529. 
the expenses of $4,367,647 um, were expended. The activities that resulted year to date, uh, total revenues did exceed the year to date total revenues by $779,764. Uh, $79, uh, as we are preparing ourselves for the audit that is coming, uh, we're also working forward in this September uh, as we are looking at our property taxes that will have been received at $622,542. Uh, we will have a total of receives for $1,511,909. So as we move forward, we'll be looking at our finance operations and what we've done from the months of July to August. Uh, essentially what we've done is brought up to date the disbursement of all that's due to our vendor invoices. Uh, we've also applied for and received our ARPA funds and we are actively preparing a strategy to uh, utilize those funds over the next uh, four years. Uh, we have set the date for the FY21 audit and we are also making regular bank deposits and seeking um, to actually uh, reconcile our petty cash. And uh, we have made all necessary entries for that. Relative to um, uh, processing our payroll and identifying any uh, related discrepancies, we're also working for our retirement accounts and bringing those accounts up to date. Uh, essentially uh, for our most recently uh, departed uh, chief, we're actually working for uh, with uh, Mutual of America to make sure that his family receives those funds as well. Moving forward uh, from the treasurer's report, unless there are questions. Uh, Haven't heard none. Uh, we'll uh, move in. One yes, second, sir? I saw Councilman Herring unmute himself. Uh, Councilman uh, Herring, did you have a question? Yes, um, um, Mayor. Um, I was looking at the finance report, and this is something that you, something that you need a treasurer look into. Um, basically, I'm looking at the um, June report under uh, service charges for street lights assessment and special assessment. Mm -hmm. They have no um, revenue there, and they should. Um, some of the, the tax revenue that they have up at the top is overstated on a number of those lines. I think like that 540,000 actually maybe probably belongs down in the uh, special assessment area. Okay. So you may want to, you want, may want to get the treasurer to look at that. I'll take care of that. Thank you. Okay. All right. That's it. All right. All right. Thank you. Yes, sir. Are, are there any other, um, uh, Mayor Carter, I see your hand, but let me just, let me just get any other uh, council members questions if there are any. Okay, um, and, and Mayor Cross, so I, I was gonna open the floor for citizens comments after all of your report, but do you want uh, citizens to ask questions after each report so it's fresh? Are you okay That's with fine. that? Okay. That's fine. All right, uh, and, and for citizens comments, these aren't general comments, these are comments specifically related to the treasurer's report. Okay, uh, Mayor Carter. Uh, thank you, President uh, Curtis. My, my only question, and it's not really a question, it's a request that uh, if we're going to continue with this virtual, uh, is it possible for the statements, the financial statements to be posted, I mean, you know, shown on the screen so that we can go along with, with what's being said? It's very difficult to understand figures, especially when you can't see them. Um, so I would ask that if, if this is going to be the protocol that um, we be allowed to, you know, that it be on the screen as the mayor gives the report or the whoever's giving the report so that we can see it as it's being done. It's a great suggestion, we'll take that. Uh, the reports are provided um, within 72 hours of the, um, of the meeting. Uh, so that's definitely um, something that we can look into. And um, the goal is to eventually bring forward a financial dashboard. And at which case then you'll have those on the website. And so you'll have all the information there as well. 
but uh, baby steps right now, but I take that one for action as well. Um, uh, Councilman Curtis, how, what say you? Oh, no, I, I agree. I'll, I'll just ask uh, uh, just for a little patience on this one. We, our mayor just got sworn in. Uh, we just talked about having those reports ready uh, for coming straight out of recess. Um, and so there was, you know, with the special election, the mayor did get on board a little bit later, but for uh, our next month's meeting, we should actually have those posted as uh, part of um, the agenda on the uh, website so that everybody will have ample time to review them uh, and uh, ask your questions as well as during the meeting, have them post right. it so you can see, yes. Because everyone doesn't go yeah. on. And so thank yeah. you. I agree. Thank you, thank you. I think uh, uh, yeah. Councilwoman Smallwood. Ms. Smallwood? Yes, I have a question in reference to uh, the treasurer. My question is, has the money that has spent on MLK Park, has it been reimbursed to the city from the open space grant? So as of right now, I don't see that that has been reimbursed to the city. And in fact, um, there was a documentation Unfortunately, that was left open um, but at the demise of our chief, uh, at which case um, the code enforcement report actually does speak to that as well. Uh, we do have a little bit of work to do on that, but I will take an action, uh, Councilwoman Smallwood to follow up uh, to see if those funds have indeed been reimbursed. But as of right now, um, I don't have the knowledge that they have. Okay, um, my other question, or oh, well, wait till I get to say this some comment about that one. Okay. Thank it's you, okay. Ms. Smallwood. Okay. Are there any other yeah. questions related to the treasurer's report? Okay. Uh, Mayor Cross, you can go ahead with the chief's report. Okay, very well. Thank you. On 14 June, this is the Acting Chief's Report, July 2021 through August 2021. 14 June, three of our officers made notification that the command staff would be resigning uh, from the agency. Uh, we actually lost uh, Private First Class Burnett, we lost Corporal Simpson, and we also lost Officer Paul. Uh, we have subsequently replaced, uh, forgive me, hired uh, new officers for in that loss. So the chief's report is actually looking pretty good. Uh, we have a few more hires that we'll bring forward uh, relative to those resignations. Uh, that line is resolved. Uh, July 19th, we've made contact with two applicants to advise them that we were going to have them to complete several more phases of their background investigation. Again, that's two more uh, in addition to having resolved the July 14 resignations. Uh, we met with Private First Class Burnett to receive uh, an issue equipment uh, on his exit interview. So that's one thing that we want to make sure that uh, we bring out in this report that as we are losing personnel, we're actually recovering our assets that have belonged to the city. The National Night Out was August the 3rd. Many of you attended and it was a success. Uh, there were uh, the four replacement officers did indeed attend and were able to meet the citizens. On August the 5th, uh, we did start a background investigation for three new qualified applicants, and that's Thompson, uh, Jennifer, and Jackson. Uh, those applicants have graduated from the Arundel Municipal Police Academy. Uh, the good thing about bringing in uh, units, uh, personnel from the Police Academy is we get to bring them into a environment which, you know, the crime as we are the third safest city, um, thanks to our FBI reporting, the crime is such that they would be able to bring themselves into um, knowledge and skill set um, without having too much of the, um, the, the, the fight, if you will, on the street. So uh, I know that, that uh, Chief O'Donnell made that one of his staples to bring in new officers from the police academy. And um, I, I will say that I'm happy to see that our acting Chief Jackson and um, 
uh, is continuing that path because it's a really good opportunity for them to actually build a community um, appreciation as well as being a superb officer. That concludes the chief's report. Are there any questions? Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Heard. There was yes. Councilwoman Jones. Uh, yes, I have a um, the um, couple of chief's reports back. They uh, submitted in the chief's report that the um, the company of Wegmans was going to give the city uh, a grant or monies of five thousand dollars to purchase uh, guns. Was that money ever received, and was the money spent for uh, new guns for the officers? Yes. Good evening, everyone. Is Acting Chief Jackson. Yes, we have received the money and we are in the process of ordering the weapons. It'll take 120 days for them to ship them out to us. Okay. When, when was the funds received? Uh, they were received back, I want to say maybe early June. Okay. All right, thank you. Any other questions from the council? Uh, I'm sorry, I have one more question. Sure. Um, we talk about uh, bringing in uh, recruits from the uh, Anne Arundel County Police Academy, but um, we've lost a lot of experienced uh, officers. Uh, is the makeup, I understand the, the, the strategy to bring in the uh, re re new recruits, but are we hiring any experienced officers to kind of balance the new recruits and the officers that we have? Uh, we have a few, I have a few applicants that uh, are considered uh, EPOs, experienced police officers from other agencies, but you have to be mindful and very careful that a lot of times when those applicants do come to your agency to apply, they have a little baggage and you want to make sure that you don't bring that baggage into your organization. Hmm. All right, thank you. So um, this is a citizens. I just had a question. Okay, oh, one second, uh, Miss. Cash. Uh, I did see uh, Miss Smallwood's hand up first. I don't know if that was on intentional, Miss Smallwood, or if that. Do you have your hand up for a question? I do. And okay. this this question is for Captain Jackson. Captain Jackson, uh, I want to know why the police officers are not patrolling Ward One. Now, I have set out on my front in the evening and talked to residents for two, three hours. No police come down Piedmont Avenue. I checked my ring in the, in the morning when I got up. No, no police officer come down Piedmont Avenue at night. So why are we not having patrolling over in Ward 1? And I'm not the only one in Ward 1 is bossing this complaint. Well, I'm working on a strategy to improve our patrol uh, efforts, uh, like assigning officers to patrol certain wards. And when will that take place? Uh, I'm in the process of working on that now. Can you give uh, me a timeline? It will take place sometime between now and the end of the month. Um, well, yes, because right now I'm in, we're in a process of training officers. So that kind of limit us to having the officers uh, in particular areas. And we try to focus on the areas too, where we get uh, most calls for service. Okay, my other question, Captain Jackson, I'll be out at in my front yard in the evenings after dusk, you have cars in the in the parking lot up there. Uh, last night, uh, they had one up there in the parking lot after dark. 
working on the car. They had children riding around in the park, parking lot after dark. Now that park got a sign up there that says park closed at, at dark. So why isn't they are not patrolling the park up there? Well, I can't answer why, but if you know that they're there, did you call the police to let them know that there's people in the park? No, I don't. I shouldn't have to call the park police when they should make a, a they should do a routine travel through that park. I was out there two hours and nobody came through. If they would have came through within two hours time frame, they would have seen it. Hmm. Well, I have to address that, but you know, like anything else, people will be somewhere and do something. They see the police, they leave. And as soon as we leave, they'll come back. I so, understand that. So it's like a re revolving door. You can never say, okay, that they're not gonna never be there because they're gonna do it. They're gonna take chances. People are gonna take chances and do things to break the law. And that's what they do. I understand that too. But if we have patrol, like we supposed to have, uh, it will slow it down a little bit because you can control the city of Glen Arden within 45 minutes to an hour, because I did it and I drove slow to see how long it would take you control from one end of Glen Arden to the other end of Glen Arden. And it took me roughly 45 minutes. So if an officer is called out on duty, I can understand that. But the officer's not called out on duty all night. And if he is called out on duty all night, you should have a backup. Well, and because we are limited with personnel, sometimes there are only two officers on the street. So if they get a two-man call, they have to go. If they get a lockup and they have to go up to DOC and Upper Marlboro, depending on what's going on, they may or may not be able to take their uh, arrestee inside the facility until the correctional officers give them the okay to enter. So then they have to sit and wait. So you need two officers to go down for lockup? Or... No, I'm saying if one officer go. Well, okay, I can understand if one officer to go, and, and they still I'm, leave the city with one officer to patrol. And I'm only making that comment because you said they need a backup. Well, if his backup is not available, then you just have that one officer patrolling the city. Yes, but that one officer should be able to be seen sometime during the day or sometimes during the evening. Or sometimes during the night. So I think, you know, one, if I could chime in here, um, you know, acting chief Jackson is is newly acting chief and he's looking at strategies of, you know, how he how he and his team can uh, police the city better and I'm sure he'll he'll look into it uh because it I understand where both of you guys are coming from um and so we'll just actively look into it to make all of our citizens ward one two and three uh feel the presence of police officers um and uh chief chief Jackson is actively working on that is that fair to say chief Jackson yes I am I've even discussed that, had a, a brief conversation with uh, Mayor Cross about how we can improve, how we can improve our patrol, our procedures with our officers. Okay, so I'm gonna let Mayor Cross chime in here and Ms. Cash, Carla Cash, then you'll be on next mm -hmm. question. Thank you, Council President Curtis. So um, we take that note, uh, Councilwoman uh, Smallwood, uh, but we do ask all citizens, if you see some nefarious behavior, please don't hesitate to call us. It is important that, um, again, as we do have new recruits that we are uh, training them on when the timelines are most likely when the, the behavior is, behave, is, is, is happening. So the more you call, uh, they start to build a log. And then from the log, we actually start to gather metrics that will help us build better rotational schedules. Uh, is it more likely to be on a Thursday or Friday? Is it every day of the week? Is it more likely, you know, on a Monday? I mean, these are things that help our police officers do better patrol overall. But I do thank you for bringing up the question. We have um, 
uh, you know, over 19 officers that we could utilize in capacity, but note that they're not on all shift at all time. As he said, he has two officers and note that they can't drive all night. They do have to take breaks and rest, but for the most part, call in, that allows us to build better metrics to support the city overall. Thank you so much. Ms. Carla Cash. Um, I just had two questions, I mean, one question and maybe a suggestion that may help mm -hmm. with police. Um, my question is, I noticed that you all said you were hiring from Anne Arundel County. Why aren't you hiring from Prince George's County? Well, right now, <clears throat> currently right now in the Prince George's Municipal Police Academy, they have a class in session, but they don't grad, their recruits are not graduating until November. Okay. They and only, they only host a, 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 one class a year at the Prince George's County Municipal Academy. And that normally starts between the months of uh, April or May, depending on what's going on. And then the Anne Arundel County Municipal Academy, their recruits go for 10 months because they don't go every day of the week like they do at Prince George's um, Police Municipal Academy. Okay, and then my suggestion is maybe you might consider um, Council Member Smallwood and just the whole city is getting block captains, you know, yes. for the community, um, cause that could help as well. And also sometimes we assume residents know what the codes are in the city and the county. And sometimes being new residents, and I'm not, I don't know whether they're new or old, but they're not educated. So maybe the council members could do like a walk passing out the code enforcement books if Glenarn has some and you know, educating the older and the new members because things do change. So that's just my suggestion. And, and I will communicate on the code enforcement books. We actually have passed those out. Uh, during COVID, the council, last council actually gave out PPE. And along with the PPEs, actually does have a copy of the code book in there. But I love your idea of creating community block captains where if there is, uh, you know, consistency of issues, then you have someone that becomes a partner with the city of Glen Arden Police Department and uh, are able to readily respond and, and help us out. You know, I'm a big advocate for volunteers from community and building community using, you know, our resources that are in-house. So definitely love that idea. Thank you for that. Thank you, Ms. Cash. Uh, Ms. Hunter? Ms. Hunter, did you have a question? Alita Hunter? Hello. Hey. Hello. Uh, I had just gotten off the call. My apologies. Good evening. Um, so I wanted to kind of piggyback off of um, Ms. Smallwood's comment. Um, not going to be the dead horse, but in Ward 1, um, I know for the last two years, I have been requesting more police presence in Ward 1 um, because there, there's a lot going on in Ward 1. And I know the chief said um, that they go where there's more crime. Well, <clears throat> um, if, if, if your presence isn't there, <laughs> there will be more crime. And um, my neighbors, myself and others, we call if there's something going on. And a lot of times the police don't even make it out there in time. So what happens they will um, try to set up shop and you know just think that's a, a place that they can hang or do their dirt or whatever the case may be. So I understand that, you know you're just getting on board and you know you're working on a plan but I, I I'm really asking from the bottom of my heart that the police force in Glen Arden really reconsider and really consider coming into I'm in war one but I'm saying war one two and three making your presence known 
um, making those roll through. Only time a police come up on my block is when somebody's called for the police or something's going on. It's never just a ride through to see, you know, hey, just make sure everything is okay. So um, being patient, definitely, I understand. But the safety of the children and the seniors and everyone else in my community is very important to me. And again, I say <laughs> Glen Arden does not feel as safe um, in some areas as it did years ago. So again, I thank you for all your service. And if we can help in any kind of way as citizens, please let us know. But I am one that will call. Um, and if it's not right, I'm going to call. Because if nothing else is looking out for myself, I'm looking out for my elderly neighbors and everyone else. So thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Hunter. Okay. Mayor Cross, uh, you can go on to the uh, next report. I, I didn't know if um, Councilwoman Smallwood had any questions. Her hand was still up. I have a, I got a follow up question. Uh, today, Captain Jackson, I was leaving from Piedmont going up to my mom's house, or, uh, up to my mom's house. Normally it take me about a minute to get to my mom's house. Today it took me a roughly 10 minutes to get to my mom's house because the kids, it's come, uh, the parents is going up to Glenarm Woods Elementary School. They had a line from Glenarm Woods Elementary School all the way back down to uh, uh, Fifth Avenue. How are you gonna correct that problem? Um, can I talk to that one, Chief? Yes. Okay. Uh, that's part of the mayor's report. And thank you for bringing that up, Councilwoman Smallwood. Um, as many of you know, that the busing situation here in, uh, across PG County, the before and after care programs here in across PG County has not been rectified appropriately. It, and I believe I can say that because I've already told the Prince George's County School Board this and written a a commentation on that as a parent myself. Uh, the before and after care has not been certified by the state yet, at which case many of the children that are being picked up would normally be in before and after care kind of programs. Uh, so that would have killed some of the traffic on the roads. And additionally, um, it's happening more frequently than I like to hear that we have children on the streets for hour at a time and buses are in some cases take an hour and a half to drop children off because they are shy still 250 bus drivers. So anyone that's riding the bus, the children are relatively not getting picked up on time. So uh, the parents that are having to come pick their children up are having to wait in these extremely long lines. And you're absolutely correct. They're asinine. They're 45 minutes to an hour long. And um, that's something that is an inherent problem to our county, not having certified before and after care uh, for our parents that do need it, particularly our blue collar worker parents. And also the fact that the busing system due to COVID-19, we lost a many of our, our drivers. And now we also fear uh, with the new mandate that came down at the national level, for all mandated uh, federal employees, that is, to have the COVID-19 shot. Um, we are threatening, if you will, um, to potentially see that impacting more um, than, than, than not. And unfortunately, that's something that it's not a police problem, but it is a police problem for safety, uh, but it is an inherent problem across the county. And unfortunately, the, the um, Superintendent of Schools has got to handle that one. But it is a known issue and it has been communicated from me as a parent, several other parents, and all that we're hearing is it's being worked and preferably they will have a certified before and after care program um, by the state by October, but it is definitely a painful affair. Absolutely. It took me an hour and a half to get my son. Uh, so mm -hmm. I know that is county wide, uh, statewide, really. Um, so, uh, Mayor Cross, 
could you give your report and then I'll get to any questions after that because I know this is all looped into your report. So if you okay. do that now, then we can get everything at once um, afterwards. Uh, thank you, Council President. So the mayor's report wraps up from 18 August to 13 September today. Um, coming forward from 18 August, swearing in ceremony, uh, the former chief of police, Glenn Arden, uh, Philip uh, Albert O'Donnell, we had an opportunity to celebrate his home going on September the 10th. Uh, we also attended the grand opening and did welcome at home to Woodmore Town Center Glen Arden on August the 28th. We have received invitation uh, to various <coughs> district level um, engagements, including eight backpack drives and including uh, going out and supporting uh, various church opportunities for uh, community outreach, if you will. Uh, as it pertains to the positions that we have to fill, we have our uh, chief of police position, we have our city manager position, we also have our executive assistant position on the ICMA, uh, which assists our municipalities in the hiring process, and we've also added them to the ICML. Uh, we've also have them on Indeed and other uh, websites looking for uh, personnel that are interested in, in job opportunities and it's looking pretty good. Our Department of Public Works uh, director is likewise one of those that we'll put on. And obviously we do have our treasurer, which is uh, at this point in temp hire. Uh, and we also have uh, as we communicated earlier, our police officers, but many of these are being fulfilled. So Council President Curtis, we will need to set up a meeting once these close. Um, we have particularly one closing on the 25th, which is the executive assistant to the city manager and the mayor. Uh, we need to set up a closed meeting, if you will, so that we can uh, get some interviews done and bring some people into the office. Uh, we have restarted school and I've already communicated on some of the complications that we've noticed across the city, but it's not just our city, it's happening across the county and it's a severe impact. And for that, you know, all I can offer is our apologies as a city. Um, we do have a city emergency notification service and I know Councilman Herring has spoken to me many times about increasing our community awareness and uh, communication is near and dear to my heart for our citizens as well. Uh, we actually do have a notification service that came with our Verizon uh, paid subscription. So soon we'll be able to uh, provide citizens with a phone number at which you can call for updates. Uh, and in the case of emergency or in the case of school closures or in the case of events that we may have like National Night Out or otherwise, you'll be able to call and get a quick rundown of what's happening that week. And we'll say, for example, um, this week, September 13th through um, September 20th. So this is a good thing. And uh, our executive assistant, uh, Ms. Victoria Lewis, actually found that out doing some research on our robocalling system that uh, we may have already resolved and, uh, with this particular emergency notification service number. Now, I also want to say that we met with the American Legion that um, 275, they actually have an amateur radio team and they have an emergency alert notification and response and they are willing to provide us for our municipal center um, a radio that actually links in directly to the emergency services. So it's a beeline, if you will, to information just like OPM has for many of its federal employees, we would have that for our city and it then put it back into our notification services number. So in the case of hurricanes or anything like that, we can give our citizens an update. So we'll be working hard trying to pull together this community uh, emergency response team, and we'll also pull together that notification service. So this is a win uh, for our communications. Um, we have administration uh, volunteer list that we put out. Uh, as citizens, you're aware, and it's on the website, that we do have need of uh, personnel to support us in various capacities. Obviously, the Board of Elections is set. We also have a permit review committee. We have an ethics committee, uh, forgive me, ethics commission. We have a youth advisory committee. We have the Glen Arden Civic Association. We have a financial advisory committee, and we have a public safety committee. 
all of these committees are in need of citizen support. So uh, Ms. Michelle Cheek is our administrative officer and you can reach her at Emma Cheek, C-H-E-E-K at cityofglenarden.org uh, if you're interested in helping the city in these capacities. And it will be a great service to us because uh, particularly as it pertains to the Ethics Commission, obviously as Vice President of the Ethics Commission, I now have to relinquish that role. Um, I've been informed that uh, we may have the role of uh, another seat opening up. And so it has to have five personnel. So we're in need of two personnel to support the Ethics Commission, for example. I know that one personally. But also, like I said, many of those are in need of volunteers. So please consider, search your heart, see if it's something you want to do to support your city. And we will welcome it, you know, uh, when it deals with our youth. Uh, we will, we have a resolution that we would like to put forward. Uh, for uh, bringing on uh, Mr. Jeffrey Hammond into the Youth Advisory uh, Committee uh, as right mm -hmm. now as a volunteer as well. So uh, just bring that out. We are in need of citizen support in that capacity. Uh, as we look forward, we are looking at some internal office space issues. Uh, so we'll be looking at improving our office spacing and uh, we're also looking at our position descriptions as we bring those forward and making sure that they're more aligned to what our city needs to grow. Um, the website committee has done a fantastic job and thank you to Ms. Lita Hunter, uh, Mr. Jess Jesse Huff thus far that has been working on the website committee bringing forward with Ms. Monet. Uh, we do and have started as per our last conversation putting on statewide zoning planning, as well as parking planning um, uh, committee meetings, hearings, uh, to make sure that the city citizens are aware. Uh, just for the record, they usually run through three hearings and after three hearings, then it's pretty much set. Tonight, they actually did have a zoning hearing and tomorrow they'll have another one. So please be sure to look at our website under uh, city uh, government and under um, community support. And then you'll see information about attending these meetings. It's so critical that we have the citizens voice so that as changes are happening on the, the, the lay of the land around us, particularly our borders and even in zoning inside of our borders that our citizens get their right to speak. For our county and state uh, local equities, uh, we, again, are praying for the safeguard of our Prince George's County public school system, but we do ask that everyone, you know, keeps that in their minds and hearts. Uh, they will start random testing our external vendors, which is, I think, a good thing for our schools, uh, but they're also going to start testing uh, for all of our student athletes as we look at, for the city of Glen Arden, we have our elementary schools, but as we look at our high schoolers that are like in Charles Flowers High School, that they're actually gonna start doing random vaccine testing for our children. So in light of the federal government now making a mandate for all federal workers to have the COVID-19 vaccination with the variant uh, that's currently out, the preparations to bring forward a vaccine for those that are five years and older is on the ground. So citizens as well as council, I bring that forward uh, just because there has been a little bit of uh, anxiety, uh, if you will, at the federal level, but note that that is something that is being looked at to be bought into our school systems for the mandating of vaccinations. And uh, other than that, we are ready for any questions, if you will. Well, thank you, uh, Mayor Cross. You actually um, touched on the staffing update and the update on the here in the countywide sectional uh, map amendment. So <laughs> very comprehensive. Thank you. Um, uh, Councilwoman Fareed. Hi, thank you, Mayor Cross, for that, again, comprehensive report. Um, I do have some questions about the reopening of the building. In our last meeting uh, during the work session, I, I believe you mentioned that we were sort of following the model of the county. And um, I had to go to the county last week for something. And I did notice that they had an app 
for entry, which was a, a health screening. Um, and if people didn't have smartphones, they had forms that you needed to complete. Um, and they also took everyone's temperature uh, with one of those infrared scanners. And I was wondering if we are planning to do the same. Um, I think that that would be a good practice for you know a number of reasons, um, for the safety of the employees, for the safety of the citizens coming in, um, and also for potential contact tracing if if there was um, a case um, and just kind of keeping in, in line with what the county was doing. Also, the county did have those six feet markers. So I, I know it's been said and I have heard it you know, elsewhere as well. The social distancing is not being enforced. But when I walked in there, they um they said sign you know sign on this list and stand on the blue dot, and there were blue dots six feet apart. So they were definitely um, enforcing that. So I would I would hope since we are following the county, we would you know take as many precautions as possible, particularly since you know Delta is such an unknown at this point. Um, and then also further to that, as it relates to the employees, are you considering um, to to mandate as some, you know, different government levels have done? So for us mandating the vaccination, um, as of current, until it trickles down, as I said, the federal level is already mandating all federal employees have the vaccination. And I'm sure it will be some legal uh, issues that will arise from that. But as it comes down that way, if mandated from the county, then we will follow suit with the county. Indeed, we do have our IR scanners up. So uh, for folks that will come and pay their tax bill, when they first walk in the door by Ms. Cheek's desk, there actually is an IR scanner. <clears throat> if you walk in the door by our, our finance department, there is an IR scanner. Um, downstairs, we'll have to make sure that there's an IR scanner when we do open the facilities. It, uh, forgive me, this facilities is open, but when we come back into council downstairs, then we'll make sure that is there. And yes, we can put taping on the floor for six feet, as well as make sure that our chairs are marked at the same distance. So those types of things are on us as a city to do. Uh, but you're right, the county has relaxed. Even the mask wearing requirement, we have maintained our mask wearing requirement indoors. And as mayor, I've made that if there's a doctor's requirement where you don't need a mask in your private office, because many of our, um, administrative staff works in private offices. So then they are unmasked in their private office with doctor's, um, doctor's note. And uh, that we have several people that have turned in doctor's notes because they do sit in an office alone. So other than that, when they're interfacing with others then we're all masked up. So uh, we are utilizing the best precautions we can within reason. And we do expect that the federal mandate to vaccinate particularly in administrative offices, will come down. And when it does, then we'll execute. Thank you. Um, sorry, I'll let Councilwoman Guillaume go. And then I do have another question. Councilwoman Guillaume. Thank you, Council President and <clears throat> Madam Mayor for your report. I did have the um, pleasure of reading your um, report prior to it being sent to everyone when you sent it to the council. So I just had a question as to, I believe it was the last um, page or so regarding the gold room. And I received several um, communications from different um, longtime residents who, were want, who wanted to know about the inaugural ball and why it was not being held in the gold room as it typically has been held. I do know that last, last go round when it was Mayor um, Estes, the gold room was not available. I was actually on the ball um, committee. I'm sorry for the noise in the background. Um, it was actually um, held outside of Glen Arden because the gold room was unavailable, but we have, uh, well, I have received, and I know others as well have received several communications from residents who were inquiring as to why um, it's being held outside of the city. Thank you. So the, the swearing in ceremony had just under 150 people in it. And it was literally two rows of folks standing in the back. So upon seeing that, it just 
I mean, it just, it broke my heart to see that people could not sit down. And not only that, but I also got phone calls from citizens who were not able to come into the facility because of lack of parking, particularly citizens that have handicaps. Um, so for us, that's one of the key reasons why we took it out to the Camelot. So the Camelot uh, has an ability to hold 300 persons. And even in holding 300 persons, we just finished talking about the six feet separation. They still have the capacity if we go up to 300 persons to even still maintain a successful se separation, if you will, of space from personnel. Uh, masks are required except for an active eating. So that's one of the, that's really the prime reason. Um, the inaugural ball has already had a lot of interest in it, uh, at which case, like I said, we could not fit 150 people and there were at least 30 citizens or more that called and said they wanted to come, but they ended up staying outside because the room was full. And not only that, but the spacing for COVID restrictions as well, well, in their heart, COVID requirements. So um, as of right now, with the COVID scare, there are still citizens who are still COVID leery, at which case the Camelot hosts 300 and we can maintain adequate spacing for comfort of personnel. Normally, the facility that we are renting can hold up to a thousand. So bringing it out there, um, the intent was to cater to, uh, you know, the emotional appeal of folks to ensure that we're doing all that we can to provide a safe environment uh, for folks to have success, uh, sufficient distance from each other but also to be able to handle everyone that has a heart and an interest to attend. Uh, this event will actually, uh, we have been um, fortunate to have Comptroller Peter uh, Francho to come and actually do a keynote speech uh, on moving the mission forward together. Uh, so with him comes some security as well. So it is one of those things that like I said, we just wanted to cater to the consistent scare on the ground of being in close uh, proximity, really tight spaces. And again, with COVID, 1,000 persons it can handle. We're putting, uh, right now I max it out at 200, but it can go up to 300 and still be comfortably spaced. Okay. I just, um, so I just recently, attended, well not attended, I just recently had a meeting with Ms. Bonnie, I forget her last name, um, because I'm, I'm holding a separate event at the Gold Room, but it was set up for 180 people already, so I'm not sure how many, this is the Gold Room, so I'm not sure if you're saying 200, if there were different floor plans that were in place, because it was pretty spread out, um, and it was for a wedding actually, and I, it was probably a week ago. Um, as far as the wedding was concerned. So I just wanted to, to put that out there because the calls that I have been receiving um, was, this, they're very disheartening where it was, you know, we voted for, you know, they supported you, they voted for you and they want to be able to celebrate, but they feel like they have to go elsewhere um, or others are going to be celebrating you while they're not having the opportunity. So that, so I, I do want to, say that for the citizens who did reach out to me. The other um, thing that I also wanted to clarify um, to citizens was reason why I was, I'm sure they were reaching out to me and probably uh, my other colleagues on the council is it's uh, the invitation itself says city of Glen Arden invites you to, and in all act, so, they, so a lot of people are saying, are you, is this your event? You know, is this the city's event? Or is this somebody, is this Mayor Cross's event? You know, and if it is a city's event as it is advertised, then how are we putting on an event with taxpaying dollars, taxpayers' dollars, and then charging them? So wanted to know if you can clarify that for those who are on this call. Well, thank you for that. So this is utilizing my name. You know, I I pay for everything I do. <laughs> So this isn't utilizing any citizen's money um, uh, at, at, rich, at which case, um, honestly, 
the citizens, I am grateful for everyone that did vote. And that's why we wanted to make an opportunity for anyone that wanted to attend to attend. Again, what really broke my heart was at a swearing in ceremony where it was standing room only, we couldn't have citizens in that space. And it was just under 150 and they were just standing. Uh, and that didn't include tables and a seven piece band and a DJ and all the other stuff that's planned for this inaugural ball. So there's some major heavy hitting things that's planned for this ball and it would have maxed out the go room. It just would have, and it would have been uncomfortable in it. And there's nothing more disheartening is to have a space and you know something happen like uh, you know the spread of COVID in an environment. Weddings are interesting as well, I understand, but and mostly, you know, in a wedding, you know, everybody knows each other too, right? Um, and in a wedding, you can also, because it's family, uh, prove that everybody has their vaccinations and other types of things as well. In this capacity, uh, the mandate to wear a mask is best we have as of right now. Uh, so that's one of the issues, really, that's one of the issues. As far as the gold room, we'll have so much more opportunities in the gold room. Uh, this is a night of, it's once in four years is what it is. It's once in four years. So as of right now, I, I do wish that citizens, if they're calling you, can call me. I want every citizen to hear that. Uh, my number and name is, you know, my name and number is, is, is posted. You can reach me on the city cell phone at 301-641-4772. You can reach me at uh, ccross at cityofglenarden.org. And if there's a citizen that needs some support, then just reach out because, you know, there's opportunities there as well. I understand that there's some people that are, are, um, maybe a little strapped for cash. Okay, just let us know. But I mean, you know, we can always work anything out, but we do need specifics of where we are uh, versus generalities. But that's the way it was. Um, as far as the city, whenever, um, obviously whenever I roll out as mayor cross, I'm representing the city regardless. Um, but I do welcome the council if you have funds. I know last year, I believe $1,500 was donated to Mayor Estes's inaugural ball to support. And that could really go a long ways uh, if you would do the same in this case and offsetting some of the funds, if you will, for our seniors that you know may uh, need some additional support. So I offer that. I mean, it's... Um, if that's something that the council, if it pleases the council to do that, but it would definitely be a big support. And we can also look at for, for citizens that may be a little strapped for transportation, um, seeing what we can do as far as transportation as well. Okay, so thank you for that level of clarity, um, Madam Mayor. I just want to say that I just, one thing that I heard and then I'll stop talking and give others the opportunity to, to speak that you did say that this is being this is being paid by your resources you know it's coming out of your pocket but the, invi the but the invitation itself doesn't state that it doesn't say you know mayor cross invites you to her inaugural celebration or whatever it says the city of glen arden and for mayor estes um, it was the inaugural ball committee invited you, you know invited them in, meaning the citizens to the inaugural ball in honor of Mayor Estes. So very different because the inaugural ball hosted it, whereas this particular gala, um, the city, it's implied that the city is hosting it because it says the city invites you to. So just want to put that, but I'll, I'll let others share on other stuff. Thank you. Um, Mayor, I'm sorry. Councilwoman Farid. Hi, so thank you for those questions. That was my line of questioning. I thought you were going to ask about uh, the opening up of the building, but um, a lot of my questions have been asked. I know, uh, Mayor Cross, I did send you an email with some of those same questions, so I appreciate you answering them. I do, though, want to um, point out that I think by uh, advertising it as the city of Glen Arden, 
in doing so comes a responsibility of transparency. I'm certain that this administration wants to make sure that everything um, is transparent, both in fact and appearance. Um, one of the things that would be concerning as an example is, you know, not knowing what the actual cost of the, um, the, the value is per person and then being charged and knowing what the difference is between that. So as an example, if um, the cost of what the venue is charging you is $30 per person, but the tickets are $65, it would be helpful for it to say something like, um, you know, $35 is a contribution or a donation or whatever it is. And just knowing where those funds are going, we want to make sure that the appearance again, in fact, and, you know, uh, in appearances are up and up because we don't want to have any kind of drama with that. So um, if it is your event, then certainly, you know, you can do what you want, but I would still, you know, you being, having been on the ethics committee can understand the perception of what that would be if you were, you know, seen to be making a profit off of the event. Um, and if you're, if it's a donation or if it's going towards your, you know, campaign fund, I think that needs to be very explicit for people to know, particularly because the cost is not an all-inclusive cost, um, meaning it doesn't include the cost of um, alcohol, the bar. So I think it is very important to, you know, just say what the actual value of the ticket is in comparison to what is being charged and what what the difference is going to. Okay, so uh, this is really great. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you all in all, the venue is about $14,000. Mm -hmm. So that 14,000 is being sponsored out of the pocket of Mayor Cross and her family. Uh, actually 16,000 because uh, you, know, you had to secure the contract for the facility. So that's the cost. And if we take um, 16,000, because we this is going to be an evening for um, of elegance for our city. And my investment has always been above bar when it came down to my citizens. Uh, so if we take the 16,000, and that includes your food, which is an open uh, buffet uh, with service that has over five meats. Uh, it has three vegetables. It has um, inclusive of uh, tea, coffee, water. Uh, of course, your alcoholic beverages. Uh, we did not pay for those primarily because I don't drink the alcohol myself. So <laughs> I did make it an open bar. And being from the military, we have a two drink limit. <laughs> so anybody leaving there uh, in trouble. But uh, we definitely will have uh, watchers on board for that. Uh, reason as well. Uh, you know where I come from, the military. So with that being said, that's the number. Uh, if we look at the tickets and that price at uh, 14000 and we divide that by uh, 200 then the tickets should have been $70 to cover all the price. As of right now, the adult tickets are $65. And the children tickets 12 and under are $35. So uh, as a gift, uh, each citizen, they're not gonna have to pay all of the costs. So we've also opened up tables. If you wanna save even more money, then a table of 10 is at $600. And note, none of this goes back to a campaign fund and none of it goes back to Mayor Cross's family's pockets every dime will be paid to the facility. And as you note, as I say, the baseline ticket should have been $70, uh, which is already, if I just say only sold adult tickets and we have at least 50 children tickets already, which are $35 and we'll do the math on that, times 200, then there's $1,000 that's short. If we take the children's tickets, at $35 for every child ticket, it's $35 short. So if I have 50 children tickets at $35, that's another $1,750. So add that to the thousand to have a venue 
at Camelot and provide this for the citizens of Glen Arden, one night of, of opportunity to celebrate and uh, at the Camelot. We are actually short $2,750. So we are not making anything on this event, but it's our heart to give this back to the citizens. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that's not to include any comp tickets. So we actually have a Christian mind group, which is MLA Minds, which is huge in this area. Uh, Malik Arnett is the director. Uh, his troop of five will be paid for. We have a seven piece band, which is well known singers and artists actually coming out of this area. We will pay for their tickets. Um, we will pay for any keynote speakers tickets. Uh, and as a which case, we're also going to make sure um, that, you know, that everything's on the up and up. So I'm fully transparent. Um, just thank you for that question. There is, like I said, if I add those up, that's 2750 plus. Well, Mayor, Mayor Cross, I just think, I think, appreciate the, the math on this. I think really the point was just making that information available somewhere um, mm -hmm. in case people don't come back to this recording, whether it be including it on the ticket or in the receipt for the ticket or just, you know, having the overall cost documented, um, you well, know. Yeah, but I mean, ultimately, uh, Councilwoman Fareed, uh, Councilwoman Guillaume, what we're looking at is about four grand that's short in putting this on for our citizens, which we'll happily play because we just want to have a good time with them. That's it. Um, Thank you. Carla, I had a question. Um, so I'm hearing Mayor Estes because the um, gold room wasn't available. And then I heard that there was an inauguration committee. So this current mayor doesn't get the inauguration committee at all? Because you said that, that you know, you, the discrepancy with it coming from the city. So is the inauguration committee different from the city? If you're, so this is Councilwoman Guillaume. Yes, it's different. So um, four years, four plus years ago, I was just a regular citizen and I was approached by uh, Mayor Estes, um, the first lady actually, who said that she and well, Mayor Estes had to put forth a mayoral ball and or inaugural ball as they'd call it. And they were looking for volunteers who would be willing to help fundraise for this event. And because the gold room was not available, hence why they needed to fundraise because they needed to find a location and that location would cost money, whereas the gold room was not um, or would not be um, at an expense that would be egregious. So what technically, so what happened was myself and there were other volunteers, some are on this call, citizens from Ward 1, Ward 2, Ward 3, um, all, were, all part of the inaugural ball committee. We actually set up sponsorship packets. I personally sold tickets um, to uh, people in my network. I went to Wegmans, I went to different places and um, got the funds that were needed for um, the payment of the venue since it was not in the gold room. Also, um, the mayor is correct. The, the council at the time, four years ago, not last year, made a payment because they knew that typically the gold room would be gratis uh, would be given for free, excuse me, so um, for the mayor to hold the event. So because the gold room, I believe that's why the gold room was not available, um, a gift was made um, for the usage of this particular outside of the city venue because there were no other venues available. So the inaugural committee were the ones that actually utilized their resources and ran around and whatever was left over to be paid, I don't want to speak um, for Mayor Estes, but I believe he utilized the remainder of his campaigning dollars to fund the gap. So it was the it was the City of Glen Arden inaugural ball committee who hosted the event. So hopefully that answers your question. Okay, it does answer my question for one part of it. Yes. Um, the second part of it was 
um, I think Mayor Cross is selling tickets now from what I've seen. So that's like fundraising and getting sponsored tables. So that's almost like the same thing. But I do speak for somebody with a disability. We just attended a funeral at the town hall last week and there was only two spaces that was for handicapped people. One of those handicapped spaces had the city of Glen Arden code enforcement car in it, which I think is unacceptable. When I go, I have handicap tags. Unless there's no handicap spaces available, I don't park in a regular space because I won't get a $500 ticket parking in a regular space. But it is not fair that people who are citizens of Glen Arden who have disabilities have to walk and do extended walk because there's only two handicapped spaces. So having a inaugural ball, I would assume would be more than 150 people that you wouldn't even want that to even be an instance of them not being able to attend. From what I heard, it was a long known resident of Glen Arden who couldn't even attend the swearing in because there was no place for him to park to get in for the swearing in. The other thing is COVID is real. We don't just have Delta variants. There's two other variances that are out that they aren't even addressing, you know, bringing up. They just keep talking about the Delta. And truthfully and honestly, I don't even think they got a handle on the regular COVID. So spacing is really critical. When we had the funeral there last week, I don't see how that could hold comfortably. And even in the hallway get coming in there, you have people would have to be waiting outside. And if there's rain, we don't know what the weather is going to be like. So, I mean, personally, I think that if people are selling tickets to come, we all should be in support of supporting the mayor in terms of attending the inauguration. And if it's not gonna cost the city of Glen Arden anything and the money is going to be coming from the sale of tickets, I don't see, but definitely because of handicap, because I am a handicapped person and I don't like walking up and down stairs because I have steel plates and screws in my ankle. And then- and then my other statement was getting back to um, Council Member Smallwood. I agree with her. When the when Glen Arden School did the tech, did they meet with the city of Glen Arden to do a traffic study in terms of those buses? Because I know I grew up in Glen Arden and we had a lot of walkers. We didn't have a problem with the buses because the buses wrapped around inside the parking lot and it didn't cause any traffic problem. But that should be something that the city look into meeting with the school board. It shouldn't be Glen Arden police who has to control the traffic. The school board, since they're bringing busing students in and having a maximum amount of buses, they should have done a traffic study. And they also should provide Prince George's County police to help with the traffic control so that Glen Arden police are not troubled with that during the school hours. And it is unacceptable. I understand, Ms. Smallwood, that taking 10 minutes to get <laughs> a couple blocks and um, council member Curtis said it took him over an hour. So you really should go back to the school because none of those kids are residents of Glen Arden. Their tag busted into the community. Mm -hmm. Thank you, um, Ms. Cash. Um, are there any other questions um, from the council before we move on? Uh, there, there's only one other thing, um, Mayor Cross, that uh, you and I have already uh, talked about. It, it just and it goes back to what Councilwoman Julian was talking about, which is the advertisement of it. I, I think Mayor. Mayor Cross is well within the rights to have a, a mayoral ball. Um, 
but I do understand the uh, the difference between the the mayor sponsoring it and the city sponsoring it. And uh, the mayor and I spoke earlier today, and she was looking at ways to um, um, retitle or advertise uh, the name, uh, you know, which it was in line with uh, with. Councilwoman Guillaume talked about uh, whether it be the committee or whatever, just to so there's transparency and clarity because this is something that uh, Mayor Cross is, is coming out of her pockets, her family's pockets to sponsor this event. So, uh, in in concert with transparency, she has agreed to um, change the the uh, title, if you will. Well, now here's the question uh, I think I have for the council because there's uh, items that have been purchased. Now, the council has been aware, our members of the council have been aware that the inaugural ball was coming since the 27th of August. Uh, and that was well before any documentation or paper was actually printed. Um, so now we have tickets. These tickets have the city of Glen Arden invites you to. Um, that would be uh, really, I think that would be an interesting challenge at this time, because you would just have to trash those and start over. And it's already the 13th of September. So that's unfeasible at this time. Um, the truth is, I mean, we have the Glen Arden track team. We have the Glen Arden football team. We have the First Baptist Church of Glen Arden, none of which are actually associated with the city, though they bear the city's name, all of which do collect funds and sponsorships for their particular entities but they bear our city's name. So it's no different in as much as I am your mayor and is a part of the city. So the truth is, I mean, um, I think we may be looking at this in an extreme. Um, the truth uh, has already been communicated. I mean, you wanted to know the finances, we're short $4,000. I, I asked the question if the council would be kind enough to support I mean, if the answer is no, the answer is no. If the answer is yes, then great. Uh, but I also highlight, I think the, the costing for each one of these tickets is actually supposed to be at $70, at which case they're already beneath the, the asking cost. So it's clear, I think, transparent that Mayor Cross isn't making anything on this, simply only wants to celebrate with citizens uh, who did and didn't vote, but who do have now an opportunity to support us moving the mission forward. Uh, so that's where we are. The, the, many of these products have been ordered at this time, uh, particularly because it's the 13th of September. The communication and uh, Councilman uh, Curtis, you'll see it. I forward it to you since August the 27th has been known. So um, I think that may be just a small nuance. Uh, uh, the citizens have now been informed and it's now on a recorded line that uh, I haven't received a dime from the council in this and has footed all of the bill and will foot all the bill for any guest or any appearance. But, um, you know, if the citizens want to come, then they know that they're just paying into the facility and not to me directly. So I think it may be a small issue again with already more than a few uh, entities that are not, not associated with our city bearing the city name. Um, I don't see that it should be an issue if I'm your mayor. And this is Carla again. I think if you go and change something now. Uh, Ms. Cash, <laughs> Ms. Cash, if you can um, just hold your comment to the end because uh, we're running out of time uh, and, and you just spoke um, and so we wanna give others uh, a chance to speak. Uh, I'll come back to you after we come to others, but I really wanted to, one, keep us on time so we get out of here at 7.30 to 9.30 uh, and give the last 30 minutes for citizens comments. So if there's no other citizens that want to comment, then Ms. Cash, I'll definitely come back to you. There's one other thing left on the uh, agenda that I want to get to before citizens comments that will not take long. Um, so I want to close this out so we can get to to your, your comments, um, if that's okay. Um, but were there any other comments from the, the council before I go for move forward with the next item? Okay. Um, 
Mayor Cross touched on the staffing and the the county meetings uh, related to um, related to the the mapping and the zoning. So I think you know we've we've touched on those things. There will be another meeting tomorrow, I believe, at six p.m. Is that correct, Mayor Cross? There will be a meeting, and it is listed on the city's website on the community. So if you want to learn more and get involved and voice your uh, opinion, please go to the city website, um, follow the instructions, go you know where you need to go to the county and, and make your voice heard. I know that if you want to speak, I believe that you have to register uh, 24 hours in advance. So it, it's too late for tomorrow, but they will, there will be another one on Wednesday that if you register um, you know, tonight or early tomorrow morning, you should hopefully get in the door to, to make your voice heard. Uh, so, Mr. Curtis, Mr. Curtis, my hand has been up for a while. Ms. Smallwood, uh, Ms. Smallwood yeah. you will be the first person I, I go to. I, I, I really want to keep this meeting on track and I want to, from 9 and 9.30, to be open to the citizens so your voice can be heard and you can be uh, we can respond. The last item I have will literally only take about five minutes. It's just the introduction of a resolution. So, Smallwood, I will come to you first when the I open it up for citizens' comments. Okay? Okay. Uh, the last item on the agenda is uh, uh, introduction of resolution for a council clerk. Uh, we wanted to introduce this. We have uh, uh, been looking for council clerk for quite some time. Uh, and uh, we have graciously found one. Uh, and this uh, introduction is just to uh, put it out there so that we can vote on it uh, if, with our next meeting, which will be next week. Um, so let me pull it up. So, Point of order, uh, Mr. President. Uh, Councilman Harry? Yes, okay. Now, I know I haven't seen this resolution. And it wasn't at a work session, and I know it hasn't been at a public hearing. So how's this being introduced? Well, one, we, we have discussed it, and I did mention it at the work session last week. Um, no, we were supposed to have a meeting with the attorney on some of it, and we were supposed to have a closed meeting on this. I know we have to discuss some of the financial aspects of it. I'm not going to get into the details, mm -hmm. it's personnel. And that never occurred. And again, that's a, that's a piece of legislation that there should be actually two pieces of legislation that we should be looking at mm -hmm. and that we should be discussing. And again, it has not come for a public hearing and that's required under the charter. We're not voting on this tonight, uh, Councilman Herring. This is the introduction. I, I mentioned it at the uh, meeting last week uh, when at the uh, special work, not special work session, the work session that we will be introducing a, a resolution for a council clerk. Um, this is just a, a public reading of it. We're not going to be voting on it. Okay, the, the charter says that no legislation can be introduced until after it's had a public hearing. That's what the charter says. So it cannot be introduced tonight until it has a public, it has to have the public hearing first. This is not like an ordinance okay. where y'all can do an emergency ordinance and then you, you can read it. That's a completely different. With a resolution, there is no such thing as an emergency resolution. So you're going to have to have a public hearing before you can even introduce this piece of legislation. Well, then we will we will table it for next week for next week's public hearing. It's not it's, to me it's it's not a big deal. We're just trying to get the the work of the city done. Right. So if it's if it's out of proper protocol, it's not malicious in, in its intent. Uh, so if that's what the charter says, then Ms. Uh, Councilman Herring, I will believe you. You're a very smart man and <laughs> know well the charter. Uh, we'll wait till next week. That's certainly fine. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, so with that, uh, I, I'm... I have one question on resolution as well. So with our submission, the administration turned in a resolution to appoint Jeffrey P. Hammond to the Glen Arden Youth Advisory Committee. Uh, any thoughts or considerations to that, Council President Curtis? Well, well, well that, that's separate, but we can, you know, in keeping with Councilman Herring uh, and his, you know, uh, expertise on how we should bring things, we will wait until next week to the public hearing to introduce it. Uh, but with that, uh, it, it takes a little bit more vetting because it's just, it's more than just a public reading of resolution. It's actually vetting that goes into uh, Mr. Hammond, uh, some members of the council may have questions for him. 
uh, and those will be private. So that should be brought forth, I believe, in the, uh, in the closed meeting so we can address those things. Okay, so I'll have to set up a closed meeting for uh, the council to uh, conduct an interview. And then from that, from that interview, and just making sure I have the, the steps in order, uh, set up a closed session for the council to conduct an interview. From the interview, then we will do background checks and security clean, screening, and then we'll bring the resolution. Councilman Harry, uh, I'm gonna lean on you for this one as it relates to proper protocol. What was that again? So this is uh, to bring a resolution to appoint Jeffrey P. Hammond to the Youth Advisory Committee. So as I understand, appointing someone to a committee is one thing. Now, if they're going to be a director of that committee, then there's a different uh, protocol that goes into it. I'm not aware that uh, personnel that have served on the Youth Advisory Committee have actually been fingerprinted and, and, and screened. But if the, the requirement is to interview Mr. Hammond first, then uh, background check and fingerprinting second, before third, bringing um, his resolution before a public hearing, fourth, work session for <laughs> voting. So I'm just trying to understand what's the steps in the process because uh, we really have a lot of need, particularly with as much as we've talked about COVID causing a mental uh, uh, issue across this county for our children. Uh, we have our Harvest Day Rewind, which is after uh, um, Halloween, which is the first Saturday after Halloween. So we want to make sure, and by the way, Mr. Hammond actually works for Child and Youth Services for Washington, D.C. So this is a, um, a volunteer that is already certified uh, by Washington, D.C. in Child and Youth Services. So he's not someone that isn't um, familiar with background checks and fingerprinting when it deals with children. I mean, he's, that's his day-to-day -day job. So this is uh, the right guy for this type of a committee. And you will recall, he also led a summer program which did employ college students out of Bowie State and various other uh, high schools with his uh, B and D bikes, uh, bike uh, weekend delivery. So uh, this is a astounding citizen that, like I said, is already certified in child and youth services. And he actually handles troubled youth out of Washington, DC. And uh, now he's so graciously volunteered to be a part, if you will, of our um, Glen Arden Youth Advisory Committee. So uh, I would like to bring a resolution to appoint Mr. Jeffrey P. Hammond. And I just wanted to clarify and make sure I had the right processes. Well, yeah, I mean, if, if you want to get it through fast, he needs to we having a public hearing and at the public hearing, anybody that you're appointing really needs to come to that public hearing to get that yeah. out of the way. But we still, as a council, still need to vet uh, the, the person. I mean, as you know, we've had an issue in the city of Glenarden and one of the biggest issues, I mean, you know, we had a certain issue with a situation that happened, you know, um, and so, I'm familiar. you know, so we got to, as, as a city, got to do our due diligence with anybody that's dealing with any of the young people and everybody on our youth advisory committee actually got fingerprinted in background. Everybody. So then I, I will need to set up an interview for the council. Is that what I'm hearing? Yes, so that we can okay. meet them and um, get some background information on them. Okay, very well, sir. So we'll set up a interview, a closed, door, closed session interview with the council, uh, provide you a resume uh, during that with 72 hours prior to. It's my gold star standard, 72 hours prior to. And um, we'll go from there. I think you'll find that he's, uh, again, upstanding citizen. And um, this is uh, a good choice, a good select. Thank you for the clarification. And I'll be uh, coordinating that as, as soon as possible. Thank you. Um... So one point of clarification, and then I'll open it up for uh, citizens' comments. Uh, but just back to the resolution for um, 
uh, Council Clerk, uh, in the Charter Section 308, Procedure for Enactment of Resolution and Ordinances, a resolution may be introduced by any council member at any regular or special meeting of the council. Unless otherwise required by law, a resolution may be enacted by the council only after a public hearing has been held. A resolution may not be passed on the same day as the public hearing, but may be passed at any regular or special meeting of the council uh, held not less than six days after the public hearing. A resolution shall be enacted for the affirmative vote of at least four members of the council. Uh, so in reading that, that was uh, my um, um, reasoning for introducing that because it, it is allowed on the charter. But as I said, Mr. Harry, it, it doesn't matter to me. We can wait next week uh, as we are running out of time anyway uh, to introduce it. So um, I was in compliant with the charter as relates to introducing the, the, the resolution at this meeting since we weren't going to vote on it. Well, but you had to enact, the enact it, you had to bring it to the table. You were going to read it, do a first read. I mean, you don't do first readings for resolutions. Resolutions are read into the record and voted on that night immediately and go to, immediately into effect. It's not, it's, it's not important, it, but I mean, it's, it's way, okay. It's all right. I, I, you know what? Like I said, I yield to your, your, you know, wealth of experience in this, uh, Councilman Harry, and it's, it's okay for us to bring it next week. So thank you. Uh, and now we're opening up to uh, citizens' comments. As promised, uh, Ms. Smallwood, you are first up. Okay, my first comment is for uh, for the mayor. Um, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, one, one second. So I will be holding everybody to five minutes just so everybody can get in. So, um, you know, just be mindful of that when you're getting your questions out. Sorry to interrupt you, Ms. Smallwood, you can go ahead. Okay, Mayor, uh, uh, I have five minutes, so I need you to have your response that's the start because I got several questions for you, okay? Uh, you mentioned that the Civil Association is a committee of Glen Arden. The Civil Association is not a committee of Glen Arden because we are a nonprofit organization. Uh, you can respond to me after, after I read my questions to you. The second question, you said that the Ethics Committee has two vacancies, and I'd like to know who, uh, what two vacancies uh, they are. Also, I'd like to know if you have resigned from the Ethics Committee since you are now the mayor of Glen Arden. And my third question to you is, um, since all the paperwork has been turned into BPI, has the uh, permit been, um, has the permit been available for the city to pick up? Also, um, oh, y'all pulled the one for the clerk, so I will ask that one when y'all have the next meeting about the clerk. Also, um, you said something about uh, the treasurer. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Isn't Mr. Stewart uh, the was uh, was signed when he came on board? He was came in as a staff accountant. And if he came in on board as a staff accountant, why are he signing documents saying that he's the acting treasurer? Now, if he's the acting treasurer, has we pay for his um, contract for Robert Half? Because that's where he came from. So can you answer all of my questions? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Councilwoman Smallwood. The Civic Association is a nonprofit. I only highlight it uh, because I was uh, informed that it is in need of some um, membership. And um, a couple of the leaders, uh, one, well, particularly one of the leaders communicated to me just yesterday that they were looking at resigning that position, at which case the Civic Association is a critical, com critical community partner with the city. And uh, so therefore, uh, I think that's one that we definitely want citizens to be aware of, not sponsored by the city of Glen Arden, but it is a critical partner, same as Debt 275, uh, which is the American Legion. Uh, they, the Civic Association reports and helps us as a city see things that you know, we may ordinarily not see uh, because they are comprised of citizens, concerned citizens, okay? 
Um, the Ethics Commission, yes, I will resign the Ethics Commission and Mr. White, um, due to family uh, reasons have asked that, you know, I find and consider someone uh, in his place as well. Um, for the permit, now, the issue with the permit is that was worked by Chief O'Donnell. And unfortunately, Chief O'Donnell passed before the permitting process could be completed. So the documents have not been picked up. And as of which case, we need to bring that before the council um, in this next meeting, uh, primarily because like I said, the, there was a, um, the documents that chief put forward obviously cannot be supported at this point. Um, the document number is attached to him and obviously he's not here. So really we're gonna have to either start over or pull both of those documents but it's gonna take a little bit more um, investigation on my behalf as the mayor to figure out where this um, process is. Ultimately, because the last persons who had their hands on it are no longer with us. Mr. Tim George is depart has left the city and uh, unfortunately we lost Chief O'Donnell. So this is gonna require a little bit more work and investigation. Uh, for Mr. Stewart, uh, uh, Mr. Stewart was hired as acting treasurer. And yes, we are paying um, Robert half for his support. Are you paying out of his contract? Mm -hmm. That I'm aware. Okay, can I ask a question? How much are you paying out of his contract? That, that is, is, um, is classified. Well, yeah. forgive me, not it's classified. Not classified. <laughs> Well, when we, I'm sorry, council president, I'm talking over you, continue. No, um, I'm not uh, sure that we can, and I don't feel comfortable giving out that information. Um, so, yeah. All right, yeah. I will put an MPI request in for it. But thank you. Thank you, Ms. Smallwood, for your- I, have, I got one more thing for Ms. Cross. Ms. Cross, I would Ms. like- Ms. Smallwood, Ms. Smallwood. I'm so if, 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 if you let me finish, Curtis, I will be finished. Ms. Cross, okay. I would like to be on the ethics committee. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so Smallwood. much for volunteering. Uh, Mayor, uh, I will go to Mayor Carter and then uh, to, I think uh, Ms. Hunter had her hand up, but I will go Ms. Mayor Carter and then uh, Ms. Hunter next. Um, and and Miss Smallwood, can you please mute yourself? Mute yourself, please. Um, President Curtis, council members, I have five concerns that I'd like to to bring them all to your attention, and then uh, get an answer from the council so that it doesn't take the five minutes. Okay. My first concern is: Are you hiring anyone? as cable, for the cable studio, um, as a director of the cable studio or someone to, um, you know, to take care of the cable station. My second concern is the signs for this, to, for tonight's meeting did not go up until after 12 o'clock today. That's not acceptable. And at that, they are the, we had very nice signs when they were advertising the mayor's swearing in. Where are those same signs for our meetings? Um, and would you please make sure that the signs go up in a timely manner? Number three is, are we going to open I think you kind of probably addressed this, open the town hall for public meetings. When do you anticipate doing that? Is the, um, um, the, the uh, citizen room at, uh, wet, at um, Woodmore, is that going to be available to the, to the citizens? 
uh, if it is when. Um, and when the mayor talks about submitting um, for um, a resolution, I hope that the council realizes that those, um, that the administration does not submit um, resolutions of uh, the, the council, that is a council function, is to um, request um, resolutions, not the administration. That's, and my final concern is I listened to the meeting um, last week, the work session, and Councilman Herring made a request. And I, I'm really disillusioned that he is going to be, that he is going to find it necessary to perhaps take legal steps to get something that is public information. And I would ask that the city work with the councilman to uh, create a, an avenue that the information that he has requested, the information that he has asked for somehow be given to him so that he can move forward with whatever the issue is that he has. Um, and I, I would just like to throw that out there since I did hear his uh, concern with not being given uh, information that is public information. Thank you. Mayor thank Carter, you. thank you. Oh, Mayor Carter, thank you uh, for your concerns. So uh, I'll, I'll address some of them and then I can kick it to Mayor Cross if you don't mind. Uh, so as it relates to Mr. Herring, Councilman Herring's request, uh, as I mentioned last week, I'm, I'm all for it if it's, if it's legal and it, it looks like it is legal. Uh, we will do a consensus. Um, I don't know if anybody else have any um, questions for the, um, the uh, lawyer uh, when we talk with him, but I fully expect that Councilman Herring will get what he requested with, with no legal uh, action. Thank um, you. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we have to not speak it prematurely, but I think we have the votes to give him what's freely his. Um, I am in agreement with you with the signs for the meeting. Uh, in fact, uh, that's one of the questions that I did not ask because one sign had seven o'clock, another sign had 7.30 uh, and, and they look awful. Um, and so, uh, you know, I agree, and and one thing that I've um, uh, have taken uh, steps to do is making sure the citizens are aware of these meetings well in advance. Uh, so we all know that there's a work session on the first Monday, uh, a regular session on the second Monday, and a public hearing on the uh, third Tuesday. Uh, those are standard meetings. Uh, the, um, I already spoke to the mayor about it, and the mayor, I believe, has taken steps to make sure that those are up in a timely manner. Uh, as, as far as relates to the actual informational sandwich board, I'll let her talk to. Um, the uh, community room at the Woodmore, I believe, once the mayor, and you correct me if I'm wrong, well, Councilwoman Free, do you want to take that one? It is um, available once the city um, became uh, opened, reopened, that space is being um, rented. And I, I'm not sure if it's Ms. Cheek to contact or Ms. Schultz to contact, but um, that I, I'm last week, uh, Ms. Schultz mentioned that we were, uh, were actively renting it out. Um, so you can call the city to rent that. Is it what, still we, for the $50? That's what I was just going to say. What we discussed, um, last week or what I introduced was potentially um, increasing that amount if we felt we needed to get revenue um, because the lease does not um, prevent us from that. But right right now at this point, it is still the same price that it's advertised as. Okay. Thank you. Oh. I think that took three of your- What about the gold room? And gold room and the, the cable station? 
Yeah, so I'm gonna let Mayor Cross touch on those things. Uh, and as it relates to the public meeting for uh, people to come into the meetings, we will be talking about that at our closed meeting uh, as well, as we want to make sure we have the proper um, uh, COVID co protocols in place for people to come and safely attend these, um, these council meetings. So I think I've answered most of your questions. Uh, Mayor Cross, if you could just answer the uh, hiring of cable studio director. I think oh, that was also uh, please uh, the, does the council know that the administration does not submit I, and and yeah and, oh. and that one. okay mm -hmm. that's, thank that's you. it that's the easy thing we, we will work no, with the mayor so to make sure that any resolutions does come from the legislation and not the administration mm -hmm. so I think that covers everything except for the director okay thank you okay uh, yes and thank you so much mayor Carter yes the any resolution at the administration is at the request of the administration and is as delivered by the uh, council. So we are all on sync with that. We all aware of that. Uh, as far as the gold room, the gold room is open. Um, same as with the rest of the administration. Uh, council meetings downstairs on the council. Whenever you're ready, the building is open. Uh, we can tape off our six feet and we can make sure that our citizens are in mass. Uh, for hiring the cable studio, we've put some significant amount of thought into this. And apparently, I guess there's still uh, potential legal uh, considerations from the previous cable manager. Uh, but as soon as we uh, follow through with the city attorney on where this is, the goal is because our budget does have uh, finances that are eligible to be used in this capacity. The goal is yes, to hire uh, someone to help us run that cable station. Now my expects, and unfortunately I didn't get here in enough time to hire the media web master uh, specialist, but I will tell you that we are actually actively rewriting that position description to incorporate more of all things media uh, because the finances that are attached to it really demands a little bit more than just you know the facebook twitter and instagram uh, as far as the um, signs for tonight's meeting i can tell you we'll follow up with that because you're absolutely right those should be out in a timely amount of, of, of a manner and um, upon coming here because you had very nice signs for the swearing in at the same time, nice signs was requested for these boards. So I'll have to figure out why that hasn't happened because it has been requested as of the 19th of August to replace the signage with something that's more concrete, uh, primarily because these are standard meetings as council president has aligned first Monday, second Monday and the third. So with that, the goal is to have nice signs. <laughs> um, I think that answers all of your questions and uh, unless I miss something, ma'am. No, that, that answers them all. Uh, but I would like to, I would just like to ask if, 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 if Councilman Herring is satisfied with the fact that he is now going to be allowed to get the information that he requested last week. Uh, Mr. President, may I? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yes, I am um, satisfied with, with that um, information, you know, if I if I get them. I do want to clear up one thing. Um, Ms. Councilwoman Jones made the assertion that there was identifying, inf that identifying information on those ballots. So I got in touch with ELEC Tech. So I just want the citizens to know, I got in touch with ELEC Tech and they said there's no identif identifiable information on those ballots. So you will not know so no one would know who, um, how, they, how a person voted. There's no identifiable information. So um, if citizens had that concern, that concern is no, not valid. I actually got an email from the companies telling me that the balance are completely anonymous. So okay. thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Herron. One point of clarification, uh, Bonnie Duckworth is the point of contact for the Woodmore Community Center. As well as the Gold Room. As well okay. as the Gold, in addition to the Gold Room. Um, okay. Is it going to be quick, uh, Councilman Freaks? Uh, well, I wanted to mention about the public information request from Mr. Um, from Councilman Herring. 
as I mentioned last week, it is allowable for him to receive the ballots. My concern is I'm not certain that the council is authorized to vote and even say that he can or cannot receive them. I don't believe, I look through our powers. I don't believe that's within our uh, realm. I do believe that's part of the administration. When a public information request is submitted, it is submitted to the administration. And so I believe the administration should be facilitating that. I'm not certain what we would actually be voting on from a council perspective. I 100% agree. Uh, I think the only thing that came up was the, the cost. Um, if, if the mayor can find it in the budget within the same line item to fund what it will cost to pull all of those ballots together, then fine. We, they, we don't need to vote on anything. But if, if it does require us moving funds within the budget, then that's where we will come in. That's right. the only and, way we will come in. And that uh, makes and, sense. Yeah. And, and, um, and I will say this, that it probably will require funding uh, based on the fact that we're pulling 1,100 ballots together and we would have to scan all of those in. So we would have to pay on the hour. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Mr. Heron, I just want you to be aware of that. So just um, just asking for your patience as we, if that is the case, then we'll have to have a resolution. A re uh, resolution. Uh, yeah, it's a resolution. I'll say revolution. Uh, a resolution uh, and go through that process of moving those funds unless it was an emergency. Um, but, um, okay. Okay, I mean, I just I just want to say that just cost wise, I do know that you can run 1300, 1300 copies to those uh, copier machines in an hour. And there's only 1100 ballots, so it shouldn't take no more than an hour to make copies of those other ballots. But whatever, yeah. whatever, but, whatever the figure is. Yeah, that's fine. I'll let the administrative branch handle that because that is their responsibility. Right. Yeah, if, to them, yes. yeah, if Mayor Cross, if I'll, you know, encourage you, you know, if it if it is going to only take you know, an hour to make copies of those that you, you know, create the, the appropriate budget and let us know if there uh, is a vote needed to transfer costs. Um, are we good, thank Councilwoman you. Free? Yes, thank you. Okay. Uh, Ms. Hunter. Um, so if there was someone else that was waiting that has not spoken before, they are more than welcome to go before me. I do not see anyone else's hand up. Uh, I just saw <laughs> uh, Christopher Stevenson. Um, Thank you so much, uh, Mr. President, and uh, good to see you, Mayor, as well as the rest of the city council. It's always great to be in my own uh, meeting. I represent Legislative District 24, and as you all know, I don't know why all the cities came together and have the meetings at the same time. Uh, so my apologies on being tardy. Um, I just had a very quick question and something that I wanted to put out there. Um, uh, and, I, and this question is directed to the president as well as the mayor, um, either of you can answer it. If we do go back to in-person meetings, will we still have meetings via Zoom as well? Or will Zoom be an option for the meetings? The, the goal is to be able to broadcast Zoom, uh, cable and in-person. Um, because we're, you know, just people access things differently. I know when I had direct TV, I did not have access to the cable channel. I didn't even know what channel on direct TV it, it was. Uh, and with people now I'm off of direct TV and I have a streaming service. I don't, I wouldn't even begin to tell you where that, where I could find it on a cable station. So I think we're working to have it on, on threefold, the cable, Zoom, and in person. Uh, it's unfortunate though, with the cable option, those citizens that are um, at home watching it on the cable, they don't have the option to ask the questions right then and there, but they do have the option of sending their questions in beforehand uh, so that we can have them uh, and address them in the meeting. Thank you so much, Council President. That was one of my concerns. I know we have a lot of uh, senior citizens in the city and most um, actually do use Zoom and would prefer to um, 
uh, stay in place. And of course, we also have to worry about the COVID variant, which we just don't know where that's going to go. Um, but the second thing uh, I wanted to tell you all is, um, as, as most of you all know, um, I represent the city on the uh, Democratic Central Committee. Um, and I discussed this for a little bit with the mayor. But um, right now, we are currently looking into our District 24 budget to see if we could possibly supplement some of the costs that um, may come up with um, the mayor's inaugural ball. Um, I know I, I was a little tardy to this meeting. My apologies. Again, I have a lot of different uh, municipalities to attend meetings for, uh, but I, if that is still something that I can help with, I would be more than happy to help with. Um, you know, it's, it's for the betterment of the city, and, and I do believe that um, if we are going to have this, then any help that we can get from the Central Committee to our state delegates, uh, our senators, and everyone else that um, is a part of this city or represents the city should uh, provide some help. So I just wanted to let uh, you know, uh, as well as the rest of the city council. So I yield my time back. Thank you so much. Mayor Cross. Yes, thank you so much. And you know what, um, Mr. Stevenson, Christopher, thank you so much. That is very kind. In fact, we did have a quite lengthy discussion about the finances of this event. And uh, as I explained to the council and the citizens, my intent is just to celebrate and have a good time with our citizens. I did mention that this is about a $16,000 affair. And at which case, uh, even if all the tickets were at the regular price of 65, they're still under the required price, which should have been at 70. So every ticket is already discounted at $5. Plus we're also offering you know, children at an even further deeper discounted rate, which ultimately brings a uh, deficit, if you will, um, of less, amount of money to cover all the costs just at about four thousand dollars short so uh, i did you know make the offer to the council if it pleases the council to uh, support the event more than welcome um, and thank you so much to the uh, democratic um, central committee uh, we do appreciate your support and um, we thank you for that again we're at a four thousand dollars uh, short, and we were just going to pay it out of our pocket, but all things help. I appreciate you, sir. Absolutely, Mayor. Whatever mm -hmm. I can do to help you, uh, as well as the rest of the city council, I will always do so. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Mr. Stevenson. Uh, Ms. Hunter? Okay, good evening again. So um, I know before, my, my question is regarding the beautification in Ward 1 along 704. Um, I know we have funding for it, but I want to know um, how do we move forward? I mean, we people have presented some great ideas for beautification in the city, but what is the next step? And what is the timeline for moving forward? And um, it's like one area right outside of the A1, um, A1 store. And it's just a bunch of overgrown bushes right there. And you know, like you ride into the city of Bowie or even in um, Lincoln Heights, you can see where it's just beautiful landscape and it's inviting, you know, whether or not we can do it to maybe spell out Glen Arden or, you know, just add a, a brick retaining wall and, and some plant some trees or do something to beautify that stretch of Glen Arden. It, is, it has been untouched for so many years. Um, so I know we have, I bought it up before, others have bought it up, but what's the timeline for us moving forward to, um, you know, we talk about it, put a plan in action and we get it done. Oh, I love that. May I, council president? Sure. Uh, thank you, Ms. Hunter for that. And not just in ward one, but there is obviously beautification monies out there, sustainability plan monies that has been in the budget, at least, you know, throughout the previous administration. And we are fortunate to have, you know, two more years of the sustainability uh, budget as well. So I am 100%, again, all about committees and people taking the lead and taking the action uh, for us. Uh, if, if that's something that you would like to support us with, uh, if it pleases the council, again, uh, we, we are welcoming all citizens 
you know, who would like to help us in these various capacities to discover what we can do to beautify our city. I do know Ward 1 did receive some crepe myrtles down the Glen Arden Parkway, if I'm not mistaken, and that was part of the beautification uh, plan uh, monies uh, that was put in by Mayor Estes. So uh, some things have been done. Uh, one of the things that I am looking at is uh, right off of Glen Arden Parkway, there is a stretch of land. And um, I do know that it does take about an hour and a half to travel the city, because uh, I did with um, the Department of Public Works travel the city. Uh, but there's a, a several stretches of lands where we can actually build uh, community gardens. Uh, we can also build uh, pseudo walking paths with the nice uh, foundation, if you will, and we can even build dog parks. So these are things that, again, citizens, your voice is so important to this administration. I want you to know that if I haven't said it a hundred times already in this meeting, it's so critical. We need every one of you and your ideas to come to the table because there is funding, there is opportunities, but it does require someone taking the lead. Obviously the administration is running the administration of the city. Uh, so with that, volunteers are critical. They're the lifeblood of getting things done. So uh, I thank you. And I thank again, uh, Councilwoman Smallwood for her volunteering for the Ethics Commission uh, to be considered for that position. I mean, more of that, the more of that spread the word to every citizen. The city of Glen Arden has a new administration and we welcome your support. We can't do it without you. In fact, it's your city. We're just here helping to get things done and we work for you. So I thank you for that. And uh, we'll be reaching out to you because I think uh, you're onto something and uh, we do have the monies and we do have the plans. It requires grant writing, which is another reason why we're pushing hard to get our city manager hired uh, because the city manager would kind of shepherd some of these grant writing processes. Uh, and, and oversight. And with our ARP monies, uh, the American Rescue Plan money, uh, we do have an option to hire persons to help us spend that money appropriately. So volunteer, put your name on the list. And I think a question was asked earlier about who do you reach out to for, for securing buildings um, or reporting issues. Miss Michelle Cheek is my administration um, officer. Uh, she is your central point of concerns. If a tree falls in the forest, you want to call Miss Cheek because she has actually created, and I'm going to give her credit for her work, a Excel database that is structurally helping us put together metrics so that we can understand where our trouble spots are across the city. So little small baby steps here in administration, but volunteers are critical. Thank you for that. And then if you want to volunteer, make sure you let Miss Cheek know. She is actively creating a list of any and everyone that wants to support our city. It's your city. And we're just here to help make things happen. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Um, if you could, I don't know, provide her information in the chat or um, send it, I will be more than oh. glad to reach out to her. Um, I'm a citizen and however I can help this city out, I'm, I'm on board. Um, there, uh, <laughs> President, Councilman Derek, may I ask one more question? Uh, quickly, please. Okay, I can um, I can I can wait because I just forgot. <laughs> I just forgot <laughs> uh, that quick. Um, oh no no, no no darn it! Oh no, I, I just want to make a comment. I will make it very quick. Okay. Um, I have my children are in sports. Um with the Glen Arden Boys and Girls Club. And um, I am working very closely with the commissioner to make things happen um, and bridging the gap between the schools and the community so they can act, use the gym and stuff for practice or whatever. I am absolutely disgusted with <laughs> the amount of adults, young adults and parents that are on the grounds when the children are out there playing their sports or cheerleading, that are out there smoking marijuana, that are out there drinking, that will out there out there with their bottles and would just drop them down. It is absolutely sickening. 
there's never, and I'm not, I'm not bragging on the police because you know what? It, it, anyone out there who sees it needs to say something. And I am one that will say something. Of course, people say, be careful saying something because somebody might pull a gun out of this and that. Well, you know, I'm prayed up, but this is our community and I don't like it. Our children deserve to have a place that is rated G, no more than rated PG. <laughs> and it's so unfair that I'm mean, asking go on, but I'm gonna stop because you say it quick. But I am asking for someone to be on board and in place. I've seen drug transactions right there in front of the kids. I've seen, I mean, just smoking weed just out like it's nothing. I don't, I, I want no parts to that. You do what you want to do in your own time and the privacy of your own home or wherever, but not around these babies. And so I am asking for assistance when these kids are out there. Is, is this a particular well, area or? It is the Glen Arden, it's the Teresa Banks Recreation Center, our Glen Arden Recreation Center. And it is absolutely ridiculous, the things that go on there. And if there's anyone on here that they feel like I'm stepping on their toes, I look, I, I'm, I grew up in Glen Arden and we had clean neighborhoods. We, we, whoever was doing whatever they were doing, they didn't do it in front of the children. It, it, it's just a lack of respect. It's not safe. I mean, I should never sit there with my children out there and I see drug deals going on. I took a picture of I had that child attack going to football practice had to walk past that i can't be silent about it but we need to do something about it garden is getting way too lax i leave from like south on one of those streets right down the street from the police precinct thank you it comes time behind that's all I have, to Eric. Thank you, uh, Ms. Hunter. Um, I'm sorry, Chief Jackson. I saw you unmute yourself. Did you want to say anything? Yeah, <clears throat> I just wanted to make a comment. When they're having activities over there, they are supposed to have the park police over there mm -hmm. to because they're the primary law enforcement agency for that property because that's their property. Okay. Thank you, sir. Didn't know that. And you can also uh, contact them with that information you have, because they have, uh, you know, narcotic things that come that's un, that's in plain clothes, and they do go around, and uh, you know, see what they can observe if they can make an arrest. You know. That okay. Thank you, Chief Thank Jackson. You. Um, and citizens, I apologize it's going a little bit long, but I want to respect the last hand that I uh, saw raised and, and then we will adjourn. That was Carla, uh, Miss Carla Cash. Uh, I just wanted to um, say, just like how um, the Democratic Central Committee is watching, when you all wanted to change, you know, change the name on the inauguration, I think that would show kind of like not unity and separation for people on the state level and the local level. So if there's any way that you can work to work it out for, if you all for lack of transparency, as was stated, I think that would be better than redoing tickets and everything, not to include the cost that would be associated with it, but just so that now the mayor is in, we all should be working together to make Glen Arden, because it's not about her, it's about the city of Glen Arden. So that was just my comment. Thank you, Ms. Cash. I appreciate that. And I appreciate all of the uh, citizens who showed up tonight. Um, all of our meetings are important. There's opportunity to learn what's going on in the city and make your voices heard at our um, regular meetings and public hearings. So appreciate your attendance and appreciate your comments. Uh, again, if you have not raised your question or you have any concerns, you can reach any other council members. Uh, you can reach uh, Mayor Cross as she has given her uh, information as well. Um, but you know, we're here to serve our community uh, and, you know, and, and we're well on our way. So thank you guys. Just want to check in with the council to see if there's any closing comments by everybody if, if you know, what I do every uh, meeting to make sure that our 
um, councilman are good to go. So, Councilman Harry, any last comments? No, I'm fine. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, councilman Guillaume? No, thank you. Councilman Hairston? I'm fine. Thank you. Uh, councilman Jones? Uh, no, I'm good. Thank you. Councilman Fareed? Um, yes, let me pull out my list. No, <laughs> I, don't, I don't have anything else. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Councilman Ferguson. Councilman Ferguson. I'm a guess that you said no. Okay. Uh, and Again, thank you guys very much. I appreciate you guys. Um, and our next meeting will be uh, next Tuesday. Uh, so uh, that will go out and um, uh, on the sandwich boards. Uh, Mayor Cross, if you could be really brief because I'm about to close the meeting. Just to make sure everyone looking in the chat, you have the emails for myself. Ms. Michelle Cheek, and you also have the phone number in which to reach Ms. Cheek for all volunteers that ask that question. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, and you guys have a good night. Good night. Uh, it's 941. This meeting is now adjourned. Everybody have a good night. Awesome meeting. Hi, good night. honey.